stuff like that. The term fuzzy, I've heard like 12 different uses for it. And there's the fuzzy guard. He went for the fuzzy there. I'm beginning to think fuzzy just means whatever you want it to mean. Now you're getting it. What's going on everybody? LK here, back at it again with another video. And today, uh, I wanted to talk about a particular term that people really like to throw around in the fighting game community. One that is important but has definitely gotten quite a bit warped people don't quite know what it means or people come throw this around liberally it's about fuzzy if you got a quick sec too and you've liked all the guides analysis match reviews and everything else i've been posting on this channel definitely take a sec to like this video or subscribe to the channel if you already have not or do both uh, it does help the channel grow. I do appreciate it. Thank you so much. We are talking about fuzzies. And if you're a Dragon Ball Fighters player, and of course I have Dragon Ball Fighters on for all these examples, you might not necessarily remember fuzzy so uh, pleasantly, to say the least. In season two, they took out enough offensive options, mix up options that a lot of characters' best option was to do what was called the fuzzy mix up. So if you forgot what that was, it's a technique where you use an instant air dash normal and get enough advantage by doing it deep enough to the ground that you could choose to either do a low, like a landing low, or a rising overhead. This is because that in most fighting games, when you block, you are frozen. So even though you could switch your state high and low, uh, your character will appear visually in the state that they blocked the previous move. So in this example, if you look at the lever at the bottom left, here, I switched to down back quite early, but uh, my character was still visually standing. In Season 3, they made this technique much, much, much difficult, slash basically impossible to do in almost all contacts. But this is a pretty common thing in fighting games. The difference is that in Dragon Ball, it was just more effective because between assists and characters having various special moves that go downwards, uh, they were able to convert these quite consistently compared to other fighting games. So this is what I personally call the offensive fuzzy. This technique of attacking a character and then with the frame advantage you use, you either do an overhead or a low attack that is a 50-50 unseeable style mix-up. However, though, we don't just have the offensive fuzzy, but there's also the defensive fuzzy. So there's a group of defensive techniques called uh, fuzzy option selects that people use on defense at kind of like mid-high to high-level uh, competitive play in fighting games in general. I'm not actually sure where this term came from. I think it came from 3D fighters, to be honest. Uh, I learned about this quite a while ago uh, in like Persona slash Blaze Blue days. So I'm going to break down the three most common ones. So again, this is a group of defensive techniques. And the main thing about this is like, this is not actually a be all end all answer to everything. You use these techniques either in spots where you know it's very likely that it will work so you kind of like hedge your bet and be safe or you don't necessarily know what your opponent can do so you pick this thing this is very 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 important the most common question i get about these type of things are like how do you know when to use them the whole point is that you don't really know what your opponent is going to do so you pick these things that's the whole point of basically any defensive type of option select or technique so to start, uh, the fuzzy block. So some people actually call this fuzzy guard as well. So this is why I even started using the term offensive fuzzy and defensive fuzzy, because what you just saw before, the uh, mix up that you used to be able to do to tall, uh, to tall characters, that used to be called fuzzy guard. But then this thing that I'm about to tell you too, also used to be called fuzzy guard. So now I actually call this option select guard or OS guard. You've definitely heard me talk about this in other videos. So the idea here is that the high and the low don't hit at the same time. So you can switch your guard and defend both. So rather than try to straight up guess, especially since your opponent is going to be using moves that are technically too fast for you to see, uh, you're counting on the fact that they can't make the high or low hit at the same time. So you switch your guard to accommodate for both. So here I have Master Roshi. Uh, I have him doing a really simple leap mix up. He's going to ID in like so, and then try to mix me up. Okay, so if you look at the bottom left lever there, you can see me 
going from high while he's in the air. Well, he smoked me. Going from high while he's in the air and switching to low uh, when he should land. So this does this stuff doesn't hit on the same frame. So you can reliably guard this. Uh, in Dragon Ball Fighters specifically, it is actually pretty difficult to make things hit on the same frame in a safe way. So if you get good at this, there's a lot of stuff you can defend properly and your opponent won't hit you, which is really, really nice in this version because they can't get their assists back as easily. So I use the base Goku assist just for the sake of example, but uh, let's say they have an assist like this one, Z Broly's A assist. You can see it does not have a lot of frame advantage, so it's actually quite difficult for the majority of the cast to try to set up things like 50-50 high lows or 50-50 left-right mix-ups. So a uh, technique like this will help you defend even when you can't see because this explosion is there, but it will make it a little bit easier for you to defend things like 6M or like ACID Air Dash follow-ups, things like that. The next one I want to talk about is the uh, pretty heavily memed one. It's called uh, Fuzzy Abare, that's the official term, Fuzzy Mashing, which is a delayed mash. So you might be like, bro, you're just mashing, but uh, this one is a pretty important one and it's actually important enough that like, it kind of warrants its own video, but not because of like this is hard or anything. It's just like the concept of it. When do you want to use this? So the general time is when you're unsure whether or not the opponent will continue the current offense or try to restart their offense or stagger their offense. Uh, I have base Goku here because uh, he shows another way of using it, which is against uh, command grabs. So you can use the delayed mash option against his command grab. So I have two recordings here. One, he does that, where he resets his pressure with the jab, and the other, he grabs me. So if I time my mash right, I can stop both the grab and the reset pressure. So let's expand it a bit. So now I have the reset, the command grab, and an air tape block string. So you can definitely hear my button presses here. So the only time my button comes out is if there's a big enough gap. Uh, this is taking advantage of the fact that uh, if he does the tight block string, my move won't come out. But if he leaves the gap, my move will. So how do you beat this? It should be pretty obvious based on what I just said. You, instead of doing an airtight string like that, you aim to hit the timing like that. All in all, this is a technique you can use when you think your opponent is resetting pressure a little bit too much. Uh, if you're scared of command grabs, uh, it, it deals with airtight block string or command grab, and they have to specifically call you out on your mash generally. Now, the last one is the fuzzy jump. So this you've definitely heard me say either both while I'm playing, while I'm talking about matches, you might have heard commentators talk about this. It's a defensive technique of a similar idea, right? But instead of blocking and pressing a button like with a fuzzy mash or blocking high and then switching low like the OS guard, this time we choose jump. So this actually is a technique that's really good against grabs specifically more than anything else. It's also not so bad against uh, resetting pressure as well, but uh, it's definitely most commonly used against any type of throw in any fighting game. In a game like Street Fighter, uh, it's okay. Usually there's better options, uh, but Fuzzy Jump has this context where in a uh, faster paced fighter like Dragon Ball Fighters, uh, you get really good return for doing this correctly. You either get a full combo punish, you can escape the situation because there's all these movement options. It's really, really good to know. It's also out of these three, probably the most awkward to implement because it's not that natural. Some people, uh, what ends up happening after a while is that they kind of do this delay jump type of technique anyway, but they usually, instead of doing the whole thing because you have to block, and then delay jump and then block. Usually they just do the delay jump over time. So it's down back, jump, down back like this. So here I have a simple recording against Broly where he's going to air dash and try to command grab me and I will use the fuzzy jump to escape. So we have two recordings and you will see my timing here that if he tries to grab me, I'll escape. If he tries to do jabs, I will move. 
So similarly to the previous fuzzy mash, the delayed mash, if you will, this can be targeted as well. So if you want to beat this, you have to aim for their jump startup. In Dragon Ball, you have four frames to hit them out of the jump. It could be quite difficult, but even if you don't straight up hit them, you get more frame advantage if you catch them blocking in the air. So as you can see, now I'm plus four instead of minus two, so I have more frame advantage. So even if you don't straight up hit them, it's fine. You get to force them back to the ground. You have a lot more frame advantage than normal. On the defender side, if you think they're trying to call out your fuzzy jump, you can mash out just like this. And that's where the guessing game gets played. So to review this fuzzy, technique uh it's two things right there's the offensive fuzzy that we're all familiar with uh in this game there's basically only one way to do offensive fuzzies at the moment it involves having a really high block sun assist it's pretty uncommon to get this situation as opposed to season two where it was a pretty important type of mix-up both because uh you had the ability to bring other characters in and set up the situation really often. And uh, if your opponent was playing a tall character, again, they took out a bunch of ways for characters to do 50-50s. So this was just a way that you could do it that was pretty practical that you could do on a lot of characters. Then there's the other group of the defensive fuzzy, which is uh, basically a group of defensive option selects you can use in situations where you are unsure what your opponent is going to do. It is essentially delay blank. So this extends to basically everything. Even though I showed like three examples that uh, apply in any game, the OS guard, so the block low, switch high, block low, the fuzzy mash where you just delay your mash, and the fuzzy jump, which is a delay jump. Uh, it applies to everything. You can fuzzy move. So, uh, for instance, in Dragon Ball Fighters against Dragon Rush, I, you've heard me say that I fuzzy his super dash. So I use this to just tech the Dragon Rush. So if it if the Dragon Rush reaches me, I'll tech. If it doesn't reach me in time or I do it, I get to like kind of flip out of there. You there's fuzzy back step. You can basically uh, fuzzy or option select any defensive option as long as you pick it in the right context and you build the situation out uh it's a valid option if you do it well uh, it could be pretty hard to hit you most well-known fighting game players you can think of are pretty good at techniques like this depending on how strong uh these techniques are because some games like street fighter 5 uh they took out a lot of these type of options uh but if you can implement these really well it really, really strengthens your defense. This is why, in exa for example, in Dragon Ball, having 50-50 high-low or left-right mix-ups are so, so, so important because you can't use a defensive technique to beat that. You have to just guess. Command grabs are fine, especially because they're really fast, but there's still that uh, kind of interaction. Like, the opponent can use uh, these defensive techniques against command grabs, and the command grab character has to call it out. But at least that still is kind of like a 50-50 style of interaction. If you don't have a command grab or a high-low or a good left-right, then you kind of have to rely on conditioning them. It's really, really hard. You have to really hard call it. You don't know what type of uh, defensive option select they're going to use your it's like you're fighting trying to pick one option against their three or four it can be pretty difficult this is a pretty advanced uh topic though so if you have any questions definitely feel free to leave them in the comment section below like and subscribe if you feel like it and i'll see you next time peace out